So this is our next task is to do a little bit more typography work. We're going to do a little font pairing as well. And we are going to do a little bit more Photoshop integration so you can see how I can edit photos and easily bring that into InDesign. So we want to bring in our photo here. We have a couple of photos we're going to work with here. First of all, I'm just going to bring this right into Photoshop. It's going to be a book bag. So we have this book bag. We want to cut the book bag out and we want to bring this into a really bright, artistic, abstract art background. That's going to be about what to bring to art school. So we want to go ahead and have this be bright, fun, vivid. We also want to use a very modern typeface for our headline. And I thought it'd be neat instead of having a headline be on a white space that we integrate it into the book bag somehow. So we have this nice, um, simple one color book bag. So it'll be easy to put some white typography on top of it. So I also have a very interesting, fun background I found on pexels.com. It's going to be this one right here. And we're going to bring this in. We're going to change the colors a little bit to customize it and make it our own. So I'm bringing this into Photoshop and it's a smart object so I can make it larger without any pixelation or issues if it's a high resolution photo. I'm going to bring that behind the book bag. Let's go ahead and unlock this layer. So what I want to do is I want to remove the white background. So I'm going to cheat once more and go to select subject and it's going to do a really good job at cutting this out for me. I think there might be some slight uh, issues here that I can easily resolve by getting my polygon lasso tool and just kind of adding that into the selection. And there we go. And now we can do a mask. So we're going to do a layering mask and I isolated that and automatically you see the background pop up behind it. So let's make the book bag a little bit bigger. Let's right click our layer. Let's convert it to a smart object. We've done a lot of this before in Photoshop lessons and we're going to make this bigger because we want to put our headline on it. So we want it to be big enough so we can have a nice big headline for it. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. What I'd like to do is I really want this book bag to pop out over this really, really busy background. And there's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to double click and go ahead and do our layer styles panel. I'm going to add a quick stroke. So I have just a stroke and originally, or by default, it's only like one pixel. So you're not going to really see it, but I made it kind of thick enough where it almost looks like a cutout, almost like a collage cutout type effect. And I want to make sure it is white. So I'm just going to do color and just make sure it is white. And also adding a little drop shadow will add and bring, make that uh, also look layered and pop a little bit. We don't want to have too much of a drop shadow. So I'm just kind of going to be careful about how much I use just enough to make it pop out over that background. So let's say I really want those colors to be a little bit more vivid. We have some blacks and grays and I want to have really bright pops of color. So I'm selecting my abstract painting photo and I'm going to just do some quick adjustments. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go down to selective color and I'm going to select certain colors and bring out other colors within those colors. So let me take some of the reds and I'm going to uh, reduce the blue or increase the blue. I'm just going to go through each of those, reducing the sign. Notice how that really made the orange pop out a little bit. I'm just selecting all the red pixels. So there's going to be some red originally in that orange. So you see how making some tweaks is really bringing out the pop of that orange. So look how much more vibrant that is when I change the reds. We can also do yellows, which will really have an impact on the orange because there's probably yellows in that orange. And same thing goes for neutrals. We want to really brighten those neutrals. So let's take some of those neutral grays and add pops of color. Ooh, decreasing the yellow really brought out the blue there. Perfect. So I can, since this is a smart object, I can go ahead and reduce the size of this just a little bit. Perfect. So now that I have that all sized, I can go ahead and save this as a Photoshop file just in case I ever want to edit any of the layers in the future. So I'm just going to call this book bag and save it to my desktop and I can drag it into InDesign. So we're ready to bring this into InDesign. Let's create a frame so we can easily bring it in as one big object. So I have a frame here. We can always color our frame if we want to, or if we 
press W, you'll see your frame. If you press W again, it'll disappear. So if you ever want to kind of locate your frames, you just press W and you can see it along with the margins. Book bag, we're going to drag it in. It's going to automatically populate. Let's go ahead and fit this. We're going to right click, go to fitting, and we're going to do fill frame proportionately. And it's just going to automatically fill it to all the way to the edges. So I'm going to press W again so we can kind of see how everything looks without all of that cropping. And let's say I want to adjust this photo. So there's a couple ways to adjust a photo. So anytime you click once on a photo and you move it around, you'll move the entire frame around. So there we go. There's the frame being moved around. And if let's say I want to move the photo within the frame, I want to change the cropping of the frame. I can double click instead of just clicking and dragging, I can double click the photo and you'll notice this kind of orange. This is this orange border. That's going to be where the original photo is. So I can go ahead and click here and drag it down. Sometimes you have to hold shift and drag. So it drags proportionately and you can make it tighter. This is the original photo. So if I drag this in, that's the original photo. So I'm just, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later in more detail. So I can zoom it in, zoom it out, and crop it. So there's kind of really two ways to move photos in InDesign. There's just kind of clicking and dragging. You'll move the entire frame. You double click it, you'll be able to change the cropping within the frame. And we will definitely practice that more, so don't feel like you have to know all of this right now. We're going to be able to practice that in a lot more detail. So let's shift that up just a little bit. Perfect, so let's do our headline. So we're gonna get our type tool. We're gonna to click and drag and let's do, let's break up our headline and to do two different uh, portions. What to bring and then to art school. So let's change this to a nice bold typeface. I have one in mind called phosphate. Solid. So I thought that was a nice, thick, bold typeface that'll show up really well on the backpack. I'm not going to have to do a ton of drop shadow or effects to get it to pop out. Let's make it white. So let's go and double click our fill and make it white right here into our color panel. And let's reduce it just a little bit more in size. So what to bring. Let's go ahead and stack this. And we can make this center aligned. So we could do that right here in our paragraph panel in our properties, our paragraph area of our properties. And let's say we want to change the spacing between these two lines. It's a little bit too wide. We really want to make it more connected. This look works just like Photoshop and Illustrator in terms of being able to change the spacing and the gaps between the characters. So down here we're going to be able to change the spacing between the lines. So let's reduce that a little bit, bring that together. And we also want to do some font pairing to kind of break up. So what to bring? It almost feels like you're yelling. So this two is not as important of a word. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. And let's do a nice thin typeface to balance with the thicker bold typeface. And I have one in mind called Mo Coco. Just kind of choosing these ahead of time because that can really take quite a bit of time is, is, is choosing fonts and we've already had a great chance to do that earlier in the class. Let's just do a lightweight italic. So what to bring and we can change the spacing here so that's not so wide either by uh, changing the spacing between. So we're going to do a negative, let's do a negative 100 that just kind of closes the gap a little bit. So what to bring is already established. Let's go ahead and double click this bottom right corner so that we can kind of get that smaller. And we're going to duplicate this, hold down option, what to bring. And since we already have two, we can just leave that art school. Great. So I think what it needs is it's just a tiny bit of drop shadow. I don't like doing really thick drop shadows because it can make things look dated, but I think on black, I think we can get away with it. So let's say I want to add drop shadow text effects. So we're going to select both of our text boxes, we're going to right click and there's going to be some effects down here. You can also get to your effects another way. You could always right click effects. I find this really quick to get to. There's your drop shadow, outer glows, inner glows, bevel and bot, all that stuff. But you can also do it in a window. You can go down to your window and, and there's an effects panel. 
that you can use as well. So we're going to go ahead and add a drop shadow. And we're going to have a very tight distance. So let's make it zero. Perfect. And maybe not as strong. So let's reduce the opacity. It just helps to kind of make it pop a little bit over that background. Let's toggle W so we don't see any of our bounding boxes or anything that gets in the way. And let's see what we have. I think we can make both of these a little bit bigger. So let's select both text boxes. And with InDesign, when you have a text box like this, and it's really kind of a paragraph text box, when I make it a little bit bigger, it just makes the containing box bigger. It doesn't actually make the type bigger. So what you could do is you can select a typeface and do a little trick and do Command Shift. And I have this top corner and I'm just going to make it bigger that way. So just selecting our text, doing Command Shift, and you can make it a little bigger. You could do both at the same time so they scale together the same amount. So Command Shift and then drag. It's just kind of an easy way to make the text boxes bigger, but not making the bounding box bigger or the area um, bigger. So what to bring to art school. I think that looks really good. We can always, uh, let's say we want to adjust our image again. We can select our background, right click, go to edit with. We can edit that in Adobe Photoshop and let's say we want to change the size of the book bag or we want to change the colors entirely. We can save it and it'll automatically populate back into InDesign. But let's say it doesn't automatically populate into InDesign. We can always go to our links, right up here, links. We talked about this a while ago. Here's our links panel. We can right click. This is our, this is our book bag link. So that's the Photoshop file that we dragged in. This is our person cutout that we did for the first uh, page. So let's select our book bag. We would right click and there would be an update link. If the link has been changed, there'll be an update link there that you can update the link and it'll do it manually for you. For whatever reason, it doesn't decide to update for you. You do things. This is how you would interact with any object you bring in as your links panel. Now that we were able to complete a couple single page quick projects, we're going to tackle our first editorial spread. We're going to learn about uh, text overflows and paragraph management and uh, integrating headlines. And also we're going to continue to use Photoshop to help us do some editing with us uh, some specific things. And we're also going to learn a little bit more about how to bring in photos and containers and do some fitting tools to make them fit just perfectly. So stay tuned for the next project, which will be a quick editorial spread.